A little artificial respiration. Oh, he's all right. How did this happen? Well, I was just helping him to conduct his final experiment. I told him repeatedly not to devote any more time to the Nefaris or maybe tablets. He said he had to know that Nefaris couldn't escape from that sarcophagus alive. Oh, he's alive. Right, I told you. Oh, all right. Dr. Smith, this experiment means that I've completed the translation of the Nefaris. I forbade you to use any more of the museum's time to work on your translation. But, gentlemen, forget this incident. If you will come with me to my office, I will give the details of the quest. Later, Dr. Smith, later. Now, Professor Lambert, if you'll just climb back into the sarcophagus again. Uh, that's great, that's great, Professor Schwartz, but you in the background. Now, I think you've now better get in the park. Yeah, that's it, Professor. Right inside. There you are. Down you go. That's it. In the park. Oh, Joe, this is terrific. Hold it. Gentlemen, now Dr. Swiss may not approve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now about these tablets of yours. Where are they? Oh, well, right over there. There's uh, nine of them. Unfortunately, only a part of the last one was ever found. That's the reason that we could never be sure just how it ended. Of course, after my experiment... Yeah, I know. They buried the guy alive in this Egyptian coffin. Why? Well, the first tablet reveals that Nefaris did first behold a Nevi in a blaze of light. Whoa, Professor. Back up. Just whittle the story down to my side, will you? Oh, sure. Well, the boy first saw the girl on the lonely road. Uh, the boy was in Paris. The girl was called Anivi. She was standing in front of him in a bright light. And she was in trouble. She begged him to help her. Did he? He did. And from that moment on, he was doomed. You mean the dame was poisoned to him? Yes, she certainly was. <laughs> in fact, every time that he thought that he'd seen the last of her, she'd show up again in more trouble till she finally cost him his life. He was buried alive because of her in this same coffin 3,000 years ago. In other words, this Egyptian dame made a sucker out of him. Boy, you said it. <laughs> Look, if, uh, if you just were interested, they're dramatizing my tablets tonight at the Great Theater, and uh, I'm attending the dress rehearsal if you'd care to come along. Uh, no, thanks. Now, there's just one thing more, Professor. When did you first tumble to the fact that you were this guy in the Paris living his life over again? What? Oh, you misunderstand me. I didn't say that. 
now. Stranger things than that have happened, Professor. Why, that, uh, uh, that's ridiculous. What did this guy in the Ferris look like? Oh, well, that's a statue right here. This, <laughs> the uh, young lady at Nefaris' side is uh, Levy. She was the Ferris' daughter. And uh, Nefaris had the misfortune to fall in love with her. She's had a misfortune as well. Yeah, how could he call for a dame without a nose? <laughs> well, Levy had a nose. She was carelessly excavated. Wait a minute. Stay right there beside Nefaris, Professor. Joe, get this. Well, that tops our story, Professor. Let's go, Joe. We've got a front page spread. <laughs> but I don't understand. Why, don't tell me you never noticed that you're the spitting image of this boy, Nefaris. Why, you're looking enough like to be twins. Both of us? You're lucky you got out of that tomb alive. So long, Professor. Well, thanks for the arm. Maybe the post tonight? Yes, but... Oh, oh, it's Professor Lambert. Oh, I'm glad it's you. I, I left the great theater tonight with the talent scout to see Mr. Capel, the big director. You know who he is. Well, there's a part waiting in his picture just for me, but but I can't go without that scout. Well, where is the scout? Well, he's down there by the stream. He just rammed the car right off the road. That's all. Oh, why, why? Is he hurt? He's drunk. I did everything I could, but he is so drunk he thinks he's home in bed. Yes, well... But you better come and show. I'll do exactly what I need. I don't know what good I can do. Please do something. I've got to get that car. Come down here and try and read the thing. Oh, try and the car? Yes, that's it. Mr. Donnelly. Uh, Mr. Well, I left him right here. Right where? Sitting on the running board. Uh, Mr. Donnelly! Hey, hey! Go out the bat! You say I want to get some sleep? Get out of your cat! My, my, you poor dear. What a frightful experience you must have had. Oh, he's terrible. Uh, let's get him by the neck and drag him up to your car. Huh? Oh, <laughs> all right. It won't be easy. Get away, get away, boy. Wait, wait, wait. Don't look. What's the matter? Well, he, he's got no clothes. No clothes? Well, uh, nothing but a, a pair of stripes. Well, hurry and we'll dress him. Wait a minute. Don't be foolish. Foolish? Well, do you want me to go with a naked skull? Well, his clothes aren't in there. Well, they must be somewhere. Very shoes. Yeah, but there's nothing else. Wait, here's his vest. Be careful, be oh. careful. <laughs> well, best wouldn't be good anyhow. I guess everything else is lost. I've lost the pot. Well, thank you just the same, Professor. Oh, oh, don't keep up. There must be something. No. Wait a minute. I know where Mr. Capel is. You know? Yes, now, look, I can take care of him. You go up there and get into my car. Yes. I'll back this on the road, and you follow me to Mr. Capel. Oh, wonderful. Put these shoes on. Now, wait. He can't go to Mr. Capel's with just a pair of shoes. You leave everything to me. All right. Why don't you people stop running in and out of my room? Uh, good evening. I, uh, I know this sounds unusual, but if you could let me have a suit for ten minutes. What? A, a suit of clothes. Oh, uh, well, now, uh, uh, an overcoat will do. for me in that big overstuffed house and I can't get it because there are no clothes. Uh, what? Clothes! Yeah. Oh, I'll only borrow them. I'll have them back the minute the interview is over and all you have to do... My clothes? Oh, please, Professor. 
It may mean a career to me. Oh. Now, you just go in there and put your clothes on him. Oh, oh no. I'd do as much for you, Professor. Really, I would. Would you? Mm -hmm. Well, all right, I will. Only this is a bit informal, you see. I, I, I hardly met the man. Oh, Professor, you're a darling. Hey, hey, what are you doing in my berth? Shh. I'm going to put my clothes on you, Mr. Duck. <laughs> well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And I'll put mine on you. I th oh, wait, wait a minute. Later. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Waiting for someone? Yes, uh, Yes, I am. Uh... Here, put your hand in here. I'm going to play again. Put it in. Put it in. Put it out here. Now put it back here. Let's put it back here. There we go. Now, ah, the button up. Oh, wait a minute. What's it? What's it? Put your hand through. Oh, you got put your hand through. You got it then, you see. Oh, yeah. Oh, why don't you let me take care of the situation? Like a man who knows what he's doing, who knows the... the... Oh, oh, oh. Well, I haven't had one of these on in years. Oh. Peekaboo, I like this. I like it. Come on, take it off. Take it off. Yes, get it off. Let's get it off there. Let's get it off now. Now, I'll fix the garter. Yeah. Never mind the garter. The garter's all right. I know it's all right. I just fixed it, you see. Huh? Hey, hey, how many legs did I break? Two, three feet in the yard. Give him a limb back. Will you give him a limb? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. minute. You don't understand. Now, you sit still. I'll dress you. Okay, okay, okay. I'll buy a drink. Here. Pour some of this panther potion inside there. No, I don't want any inside. Well, that wouldn't do much good outside. Of course, it might be some good. It grows hair. Hey, what are you doing? No. Yeah. So it's... <laughs> now, look, it's all over me. If you can't keep this place clean, I'll put you out of here. Relax now, relax. Now relax, right. Oh, oh you too, I'll show you. Yeah. Sit back there. Sit back there. Why don't you fight there? Oh. Now, come on, get those pants Oh, you want to rest? Uh -huh. Well, I'm able to clap my head like when you bring everybody in your body. You know that? What are you waiting for? That's what I want to know. I don't want to rest. Oh, you want to fight, huh? No, I don't want to fight. I'm your friend. Oh, maybe a nice little friendly fight. Well, now we're getting someplace. Let me tell you, ask you something. Did, did you ever hear the rabbit punch? No. Well, don't go away. It goes something like this, you see? <laughs> but, of course, it ain't allowed in a regular fight, but you can do it all the time if you want to in a friendly affair, you see? You just keep the like that. Wait a minute. Come up here. Yeah. That's my turn. Yeah. Did you ever hear of lots of that? Lots of what? Uh, lots of that. Oh, it's a great uh, game, yes. Uh, you play it with your feet. Oh, sounds kind of cute, isn't it? Put your head right there and watch my feet. Yeah, right there, watch my feet. Uh, is the game over? No, now put it's your head kind of hard there if I could put my hand right down. Put my head out. Put it down. That's better. Yes. Now I haven't got the heart. Okay, okay, we'll play rabbit fights to get us more fun anyhow. I'll tell you that. Uh. <laughs> How are you doing? Well, I'm doing much better now. You got him almost ready? I'm buttoning him up. I can't see very well. Uh, wake up. I'm gonna... Wake up, Mr. Jones. Why don't you let me alone mind your own business? Stand up here now. Stand up. Are well, you going to have to help me a little? All right, I will. To come out. All right, Mr. Donovan. Well, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm, I'm stuck. Come on. Now. Come on. Be quiet now. That's it. What's the idea of the polka? Now, right up this way. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean... Hey, you're all backwards. Hey, Wait, hey. I'll turn you around. What did I do with my stomach? Oh, never mind your stomach. Now, come on, this way. Well, I got to find this might want to drink. We'll go up here again. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. I don't follow me around. You don't have to worry about a thing. I'll, I practically live here. 
I'll be right there. Why, Mr. Donald, what happened to you? Oh, what's your opinion, Charlie? Seem to be all turned around, sir. Well, that's possible. I want to see Mr. Capel. I think Mr. Donald is just better rest right here. Now, you leave this to me, honey, and you sit there. You rest right there. And Charlie, do me a favor, will you? You keep your eye on her. She's been acting very strange. You expected me? No. But I'm hoping to get a part in Mr. Capel's new picture. Oh. Wait here. Yes. Charlie, I want to go to bed. Mr. No. Donlan, uh, what happened? It seems the part has been cut. Oh, but there must be some mistake. That's the time I caught you. Come on. Come on, get out of there. Open these doors. Hurry up now. You can't get away. Hurry up. Come on, come on. I see you in there. Hey, what are you trying to do? Oh, no clothes on. That's fine. Come on, get out of it. Now, don't try any funny business. Come on, I got my hand. All right, I'll stick it down. And I'm not drunk either. Skip it. You're smelling up the station like a distillery. Slap him in cell 13. Oh, oh wait a minute. Uh, couldn't I put a bail? Right. Don't worry, Mr. Well, oh, where's the fresh air that time? Right there. Ah! Oh. Oh. He says he's the Egyptianist from the museum. Sweetheart, he is. Hey, actually, sorry. Uh, no! Just you give him that. Now, wait a minute. Don't, gentlemen, this is indelicate. He's utterly disgraceful. Oh, but Dr. Sutherland. <clears throat> the Board of Trustees has spoken, Professor Lambert. There is no course open to me but to ask for your resignation immediately. But, Dr. Smoot, that would put me in extremely bad order with the National Archaeological Society. You should have thought of that before you extended your helping hand to this damsel in distress. And if you don't locate her in the museum's car before nightfall, I shall have to report that matter to the police also. Yes, sir. The old Egyptian room won't seem the same without you, sir. Thank right, you, Mr. Cup. President Lambert? Yes? A telegram. Sign here. Uh, Gustav, sign for you. Gustav, does that say what I think it says? Uh, the National Archaeological Society hereby invites Professor Dean Lambert to join Egyptian expedition, leaving New York in nine days. Unable to send funds, but all expenses paid from New York to Egypt and back in for three weeks. Oh, well, I don't read good, but that's what it says. Oh, you stop it. I trade my job. If I could see Dr. Schmutzen's face when he hears that. <laughs> but, uh, with the gentleman at the chain. Oh, of course it will. I'll just have my trial, pay my fine, and go. <laughs> but I've waited all my life for this chance to go to Egypt. You should have thought of that before you started chasing through the streets with no clothes on. The trial comes up Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th? Why, that's over a week away. I've only got nine days to get to New York. I told you that Egypt was out. So you better go home and start unpacking that bag. Because you ain't the type to become a fugitive from justice, are you, Professor? No. No, Egypt. Here, here. You don't want these? Oh, yes. Those are the fathers. A young man's got to sew a wild oak now and then, Professor Lambert, or he ain't human. But I wasn't sewing a single wild oak, Mrs. Green. Then what was you doing with your clothes off, Professor Lambert? Well, I, uh... Uh, she, uh... Yeah? May we drop the subject. Hmm. What time did the train leave, Professor? Why, uh... Oh, the 
boys must have tacked those cowbells and things on while we were in the church, Lammy Pie. I'll take them off. Oh, kiss me first, Ducky. Now hurry back so your Lammy Pie won't get low. Uh, goodbye, Miss Green. I'm off for you. I declare, I've been misjudging you, Professor. You've got more excitement in you overnight than my husband had in a lifetime. I'll send you a postcard. All right. Bye. Talk to the police sergeant. Pray that, pray that, will you? Hey, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Sh don't monkey around with that fella. I just got him to sleep. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello, is that you, Murphy? What do you think has happened, Murph? I've had all my stuff stolen from me by a robber. What did this robber take? He took, he took the watch my dear old mother gave me with her own dear old hand. That's for one thing. One push on that doorbell. Where is Professor Lamb? Are you from the police department? No, I've got his car and his clothes. Gracious me, he'll need those in Egypt. Egypt? He and his friends just started for Egypt in a trailer. Which way? Head to the east down Highway 60. You can't miss the trailer. Got just marriage sign on it. Hey, listen. Hey, this is where Professor Lambert lives. No, it isn't. <laughs> hey, you just married? Ah, oh, just divorced. And am I happy? Whoopee! <laughs> A fine thing. He, he can't go to Egypt. Ma'am? He's got to go back and clear himself. I'm sure that's all right with me, ma'am. Well, once he's done that, he can go to Egypt. If you're a friend of his, you'll help me convince him. Well, you're right. He shouldn't go to Egypt. Say, what is there? <laughs> That's all right, Lanny. That's all right. You know, don't you, that the man should not go to Egypt? Don't just sit there staring at me. Do something. <laughs> well, let's go back in the trailer and tell him. Like an owl trailer? Come on, Lanny. Why, he's not in there. He don't say. Did you see anybody else who's just been married on the highway? No, ma'am. We was married in the church. Oh, now I'll have to drive all the faster. I can't let him get off the Egypt. Oh, would you still love me if I was not trooper? I've got some new geranium bath salts. I bet they'll smell awful pretty. <laughs> I will look. Get out of that bathtub, you. I have no intention of... Aren't you just a teeny-weeny little bit ashamed of yourself, mister? No. Uh, yes, that, that is... How uh, loathsome a bathtub people. I assure you I get no peeping. Here's your soap. Here's your soap. Ask him what he was doing in there in the first place, Robert. Yes, what were you doing in our bathtub in the first place? Well, it's imperative that I get to Egypt. Egypt? Egypt? Oh! No. Oh! 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 Oh, darling, you have to hang on to me tight all night long. 
She's full up, right to the top. So you're going back. Yes, I missed it. You, you sure you haven't seen anybody else answering that description? You set it this way in a trailer and carrying a suitcase and a pick and shovel. Well, one out of two carry a pick and shovel in this neck of the desert, miss. If you want to wash up, I'll keep my eye peeled for your friends. Thank you. Good evening. Hiya. Huh. Well, stranger, looks like you've been eating dust. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You think that there's a chance for some kind person giving me a lift east across the desert? Well, maybe. And late. Say, did you by any chance pass a chap on the road carrying a pickaxe and shovel and a valise heading east? No, I didn't. Tell her about uh, five feet ten, wearing a light suit and glasses. No. I didn't see anyone answering that description. Hey, why don't you be more careful? Fill her up. Sorry, calling State Highway Patrol Car 275. That's you, ain't it, boy? Yeah. Isn't that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Be on lookout for man believed heading east on Highway 66. This man is 5 feet 10. Repeat, 5 feet 10. Dark eyes and hair, wearing light suit. When last seen, he was carrying a suitcase with pick and shovel. This man is wanted by the Los Angeles police on suspicion of robbery. Has also jumped bail on charges of drunk and reckless driving, committing offense against public decency. He may resist arrest. Why, I'm so sorry. But that's so soon, darling. Uh, did Rain you uh, have a nice leader. war? Did I? Will you tell me why you've been running? Uh, running? Uh, uh, yes, the gasoline has been running all over the place, but... Uh, I'm not uh, talking about uh, gasoline. Why did you... But I didn't, uh, it's in my other clothes. Be on lookout for man believed heading east on Highway 66. His name is Dean Lambert. Dean Lambert claims to be on his way to Egypt. When last seen, he was carrying a suitcase with pick and shovel. Lambert may be driving a station wagon car with the insignia of the Olympia Museum on its door. This man is wanted by Los Angeles police on suspicion of hey, robbery. Hey, here's you. As also young man on charge of the robbery. Station way. Get that gas hold out of the tank. What is it? Get it out of there. The tank ain't full yet. Turn off the road as soon as you get over this hill. And turn off the lights. You were heading back to Los Angeles. Of course I was. That's why I followed you. Don't you know that if you keep running away, the judge will convict you of everything? Even of robbing Mr. Donnellan. I'm not going back. It's the first and last chance I'll have to go to Egypt. I've got to get to New York for the 14th. But you'll make a criminal of you. I don't care. I'll go to jail after I get back from Egypt. But not before. Goodbye, now. Where are you going now? You said you had to be in New York by the 14th, didn't you? Yes, indeed I must. After all you've suffered on my account, the least I can do is see that you get there. You mean you're going to drive me to New York? No, we'll take turns on it. we got to get this car back to the museum somehow. you better just drive it back and let me... I'm, uh, I'm afraid I can't do that. You see, uh, the police are looking for me, too. What for? I'm afraid I can't even tell you, Dean. We'll be able to see us from the road. We'll be safe for the night. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I'd better put another stick on the fire. Looks a little stormy over there. I like this little hole you dug in the sand for my hips. Very comfortable. Yes, sir. Trick I learned when I was a Boy Scout. Don't tell me they teach Boy Scouts about women. Uh, very comfortable. Yeah. Huh? You know, you brought excitement into my life, didn't you? Oh, well, I've never considered myself the exciting type. Well, oh, it's much more fun being a needy here on a real desert than on a stage. A uh, needy? Here? Well, after all, I chased you across the desert just like an Evie chased in a Paris, didn't I? Hmm? Well, didn't I? Well, uh, yes. <laughs> That's so. Mm -hmm. It's strange that uh, you came to my rescue last night just the same way that he did. Uh, yeah, there's a slight similarity. Of course, an Evie's chair is upset, and you are not in the Yes, but in the Paris saw an Evie in a blaze of light, and uh, you saw me in a blaze of light. Well... Yes, but those were my headlights, and the chariots didn't have headlights. But you did come to my aid. Well, no, but... Uh, what did the uh, rest of the tablets say? The Ferris did come to her aid. Neither knowing that this chance meeting would seal their eventual doom. <laughs> yes, sir, that's a good one. <laughs> Oh, just a tumble, Womble. I mean, a uh, weedle. Uh, just a weed. Now, don't be so nervous. Please, tell me the story of the next tablet. And, uh, after coming to the rescue of the the Ferris found himself in the, uh, toils of the law. Mm-hmm. In order to escape the penalty of the law, they fled forth into the wilderness. Huh? Don't, don't stop, please. Uh, no, I was just thinking. What? Well, there ain't one school of thought which holds that uh, Nebe made a monkey out of the Ferris. Oh? <laughs> uh, don't you think that you ought to go to sleep now? Well, kiss me good night, and I will. What? Oh. Yeah, well, is it absolutely necessary? Oh, absolutely. I, I wouldn't feel safe without it. Uh -huh. Well, all right. Oh, it makes me feel much safer. Yes, well, I'm glad you feel safer. <laughs> oh, Dee, you're not like any other man in the world. Oh, don't say that. Oh, I mean it. You're so reckless and yet so... Well, so innocent. You don't even know what's happening to us, do you? Well, I'm beginning to wonder. Good night. Good night. Now, by the time you read your old fourth tablet, I will tell you. Yes, yes, that's right. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> In the wilderness, during the night, the Navy did embrace Nefaris. Oh. And thereupon, the path of the gods was hurled down upon his head. A storm, a thunder, it was lightning did come upon them. Killing the Ferris was smitten defenseless by a lightning bolt. Um, 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 um
for pay. Boom, next two. What are you saying, Bill? No. Oh. Let it be fatal. I must scrunch. Scrunch. Yes, dear. We'll scrunch. Ahead. I've lost his mind. Hey. Crunch chipped. He licks smirk. What? Crunch chipped. He licks. Smirt? Oh, double talk, huh? Smirt. Wise guy, huh? Uh, I, I beg your pardon. Yeah? Are you nuts? Oh, yes. Uh, I remember now. Uh, you see, I've just been struck by light. Don't try to flatter me. Uh, where are we? We're here. Where'd you want to be? Oh. Oh, New York. Yes. Yes, in fact, I ought to be there right now. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's that I smell? Hamburger cooking. Food? Food! Food! Oh, yes. Have I eaten lately? No! No! That will be for me. I wonder, I wonder if you can change. Why is it an outrage? Why, I, I've been robbed! Robbed? Robbed! You ought to know better than to allow undesirables in here. You know what? I've a good mind to sue you. Nobody does look until you come in. Watch your tongue, my man. Apparently, he doesn't know who I am. I don't care if you are the king of Siam. I still want profits for the state. I happen to be Judge James G. Parkhouse Marshall. Uh, happy to meet you. Uh, oh. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you speak that way to me and my friends? I don't care. Uh, one moment, gentlemen. Now, I really can't afford this, but... May I have the honor of paying your check, Mr. Judge Marshall? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> no! I still have my pride and my integrity. But if this cash house vulture demands some security, I'll gladly leave something with him to uh, assure him of my good faith. Uh, now you're talking, Mr. Neal. Let me see what you got. With pleasure. My card, sir. Card? My personal card. Imagine the fellow doubting my veracity. <laughs> Come along, my friend. Hey, what about the ham set? Huh? Oh, almost forgot. <laughs> oh, I've been robbed, too. Two times. Two days, my friend, two days. man was quite violent. 
Thank you very much for helping me, Judge. General, not at all. What? You offered to help me. It was tit for tat, eh? Uh, what kind of a judge are you, sir? Erstwhile. That's funny. I'm an erstwhile professor. A very good label. Always good. Always. What your racket? I beg your pardon? Be frank with us, Professor. What are your plans? Oh, well, I'm bound for Egypt. I expect to explore tombs and uh, ancient graves and search Oh, uh, grave, rather. Hmm? Well, uh, in a sense, but... Uh, I've traveled with many a stinker, but I draw the line at school. Patience, Jerry. Patience, patience, patience. <laughs> You will observe, Professor, that Jeremiah and I always travel in the private car. You do as we do, and you will travel comfortably. Then we stop, and I hear cattle moving. Is that a good sign? Get off my foot. Get off my foot or I'll cut a stick out of you. Tell her, Jeremiah. Tell her. What are you doing up there, Professor? I'm trying to get my suitcase. There. Oh! No, Bucky, no. It's small, but you'll find it where the night took out the end of the city. Oh, that's a success. Well, at least it's clean. Any word here? Well, according to the railroad company's report, a man answering your description of him got mixed up with a load of cattle near Dodge City, Kansas. Cattle? Oh, he'll get hurt. You see, he's not in his right mind. Oh, well, we'll take care of this for you. I'll inform the police to send word all along the line to keep an eye out for him. Well, I wouldn't, sir. Uh, I wouldn't want to put you all that trouble. Oh, no trouble at all. Just keep in contact with our agency. <laughs> A <laughs> good whiskey never hurt anybody. It's women. A good woman never hurt anybody, neither. That be mine. Judge. Yes? Have you ever met a woman who, well, who seemed to be a good woman and got you all, well, sort of happy, keyed up, and still... And still what? Still isn't just a woman. She's something... Else. A female impersonator? Oh. Hey, look! What? Professor, get up! Run! Run, Professor! Run! Run! Where to? Run! The tunnel! Run, Professor! Run! Where are we going? Back the road!
Look out below. Nothing can be done by hurry, Professor. I've got to get to New York by Thursday. This is only Ohio. Pennsylvania. You have ample time, my friend. Ample time. I owe my t-shirt. Here's our breakfast. What? No mashed potatoes? You, you didn't steal that, did you? No. I borrowed it from the government. <laughs> Hey, you boys want a lift? Much obliged. Well, hop right in, Hasbro. Hop right in. Oh, thanks. Take it snappy. Here, let me help you with your bag. Hmm? Hey, Sonny, you coming? Huh. Yeah. Come on, hurry up. Hop in. Want to get along. My name's Sweat, County Sheriff. Huh? Oh, oh, oh yes. Car breakdown? No, I should say not. Uh, that is, uh, did it? No, no, no. We just ran out of oil, didn't we, Professor? Uh, yes, uh, uh, no oil. <laughs> Are you a professor? Uh, well, yes. Uh, why? Oh, nothing. Your name Lambert? What? Uh, why, uh, uh, no, no. What is your name? Uh, uh, Sweat. Sweat? Well, that's my name. Uh, that's odd. Uh, how did you guess it? Guess what? Uh, my name. Say, what branch of the family are you from? Uh, Cold Sweat. Huh? Yes, I'm my uncle. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. You see, I just got a message to be on the lookout for some professor fella heading east. He thinks he's going to eat you. Egypt? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> He's got a screw loose. Turn out of his head. That's ridiculous. How do you know? Did you see him? No, did you? No, but... Well, then, don't go around spreading malicious gossip about people. Sweat. Ha! Now, look here. I'm Henry Sweat. Everybody knows me. What's your father's name? How's that? I, I didn't quite catch that. What did you say? Hey, are you crazy? Oh, no, 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 but he, uh, he makes noises, you know. This is Professor Dufany. He's a ventriloquist. <laughs> oh, yeah. I see you. Uh, the show folks, eh? <laughs> <laughs> sure sounds like a chicken, don't he? Yeah. Say, hey, how do you do it? Uh, well, you see, you try not to hold your lips and say, cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> who can do the double chicken or two chickens at one at the same time. <laughs> hey, pretty good. <laughs> hey, uh, can you do a wild goose? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that is, uh, uh, how does the wild goose go, Professor? Why, you know how you used to do the wild goose, Professor. Sort of a home, home, No, 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 you ain't got it. It's more like, uh, 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 uh. Oh, oh, yeah, more of an orange horn, huh? Yeah. You know, when a geese flies south of the fall, you can hear them out over the marshes with that deep sound of a tie. Pretty. Huh? Uh, orc! Orc! No, 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 no. no. Uh, you better do it again. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Still sounds like a chicken. Yeah, well, that's my trouble. <laughs> Well, go on. Uh, what do geese eat? Oh, most anything. They eat alfalfa. Couldn't do it. Haven't got any alfalfa. Well, here's some. Go ahead, eat it. It's all right. It'll dry, but it won't hurt you. What are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> Open your mouth. I'm a magician, too. What do you got under your coat? Uh, nothing. <laughs> so, you're a professor, and you wear glasses, and you lay eggs. Yeah. 
Maybe you're the fellow I'm looking for. I'll be frank with you, Sheriff. My friend did have a chicken under his coat. Your friend Blooney. Sheriff, he sold the sheriff the chicken. What chicken? I think they're all loony. Here's the game. Now, you fellas, here, come here. What's the matter with you? Come here. here. Come back here. Get him there, boy. Hey, you. Hey, I'll get away from you, hey. No, I don't need any help. You're trying to loot it. Come on here. Now, no, no. no. Don't talk. Don't talk. I'm going to New York. New York? I'm going to Egypt. Come here. Come here. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Yes, I'll be responsible for him. I'll be there by morning. Yes. Just where do you think you're going? Springville, Pennsylvania. Only 10 miles? What's the hurry? Well, it just happens that I have a very dear friend there who has to get to New York day after tomorrow. Oh, yeah? California yeah. car, huh? Let's see your driver's license. I, my license? Of course. I, I have it right here. Just a minute. Hey! Olympia Museum. What kind of car is this, anyhow? You wouldn't want to be driving your friend to New York in a stolen car, would you? A stolen car? I know. I, I, I wouldn't. Look out! Hey! Come back here! Run back to the crossroads and phone Springville. Hey, you! I'll see if I can't fix this and chase after it. Give me a ride, will you? I want to go to the crossroads. Well, good morning. I come for the man who thinks he's going to Egypt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice looking fellow. Never take him for a nut now, would you? Oh, no. He's harmless. That is, he's harmless. Might I have him now, please? You bet your life you can. Oh, Professor, there's somebody here to see you. Here's a young lady. What lady? Dean, I... How did you find me? I told you not to follow me. I wrote it on the windshield. Yes, lies ahead. I He's know. quieter when you feed him vegetables. Oh, don't be stupid. Now, take it easy. You'll have to sign for him. I'll get the release papers. Yes, sir. Release papers? You mean... You can get me out of here. Dean Lambert, you're as sane as I am. Did you just run away so that I wouldn't be involved? Well, I... I answer it. Yes, but how... The police have traced the museum car. I bet they're calling now. Answer it. Hello. Yes, it's the sheriff's office. A girl headed this way in a stolen station wagon. Tell him he's drunk. You're drunk. What did I say that for? Go on. Pretend you're the sheriff. Bowl him out. What did I say? Well, isn't that too bad? I should think you boys should stop picking on little girls. What's that? Now, look here, Sheriff. I'm a state patrolman. I don't have to take any of this. Well, I, I got one of them. Who was that snooky I saw you out with last night? You big Cossack. What did you call me? What's the matter? Sheriff or no sheriff, I'll knock his block down between his knees. Look out. Hey! Did any of your men turn in that girl driving a station wagon? Turned her in? Why, uh, I just got through waving goodbye to her. Goodbye to her? Yeah. Well, which way'd she go? <laughs> Around that way. Hey! Who do you think you are talking to me like that on the phone? Why did you... You don't think that those policemen could be after me again, do you? No, this time they're after me. Huh? Step on it. Oh. Oh. Look! Look! Yes, I... Look! All right, hold tight. We'll lose them now. Hey! Yeah, what's the matter? The 
See a car turn in here just now? No. A stolen car, a man and a woman. Look around for him. I'll be back. All right, boys. Search the camp. Hey, what is this? Come on out of there, you. tent doing there? When I passed here a while ago, it was on that side. What side? That side. Well, it was there when I came along. You're losing your grip. Come on. Hey! Get your hand off the horse! You! Oh. Nobody there. Maybe they ducked into the woods, huh? Well, they can't get far that way. We got the car. We'll take it down to the station and check on it. Wait! Pop. Hey! 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 Oh! We'll stay here till we're sure that they're gone. Dean, do you forgive me? Yes. I guess it's not your fault any more than it's mine. Just fate. Oh, of course, darling. Oh, I must never lose you again. Oh, Dean, darling, we will stay together like this always, won't we? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, why not? Well, someone might cut the tree down. I mean, when we get out of this. Do you realize where this is going to lead us? Well, yes. Yeah. We'll get married next, I suppose. No! No, don't even say that word. Don't you believe in marriage, darling? Not for us, never. Well, That's what we did on the eighth tablet. What are you talking about, Dean? You know what I'm talking about. A maybe. A maybe? Yes, a maybe. And it's all come true. Every single inscription on the first seven tablets. That's why you ran away? That's why you won't marry me? Because you think... You know it's true. Why, falling in love with you is just committing suicide. And you won't marry me because you actually believe we... Because of nine cracked clay tablets? I've been convinced of it beyond a shadow of a doubt. I think it's best that we never see each other again. You think so? All right, you silly, superstitious nitwit. You get your wish. Right now. I never want to see you again as long as I live.
you I never wanted to see you again. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to jump. Go ahead and jump. I don't break the tablets. Oh. Huh. <laughs> right here. Hey, look. There's the fella. Come on. Harry, look! Oh, oh, oh. As I live and breathe, I believe that that is our friend, the professor. More bad luck. What now? Just keep still. Give me a chance to think. We're stopping again. Try another jump. We're right in the station. Hey, George, any more passengers for this weekend? No, oh, they're up for Jersey. Did you hear what I heard? We're about to be refrigerated. That's yell to be let out. Hey! judge with your robe off. No. Definitely. Maybe. Don't Maybe. argue, Henry. No, no. I want you to inform me to know that I'm grateful to you for your support and confidence in putting my seat on the bench. I hope we haven't misplaced it. No, I'm sure that is. It's nice of you being here for my first court session, isn't it? Yes, and you're late. No, no. These two, Your Honor, I picked up together. Together? Yes, ma'am. They were riding in the same car. Dear, dear, that's bad, isn't it? Would it make any difference if they knew we were together in a refrigerator car? What? Well, I just thought they might not be so shocked if they knew we never thought out. This case involves the very grave charges of vagrancy, delinquency, and immorality, calling for about a year's sentence. That's impossible, Your Honor. I simply must be in New York tonight. And before you try sentencing me for anything, I demand the right to make a phone call. What? Well, one moment, Your Honor. One moment. I uh, I have the honor to be counsel for my two young friends. My counsel. My personal guard. Judge James G. Parkhouse Marshall. You, uh, you've been regularly admitted to the bar? Oh, regularly. In fact, before you were born, my dear young lady. Oh. Uh, very well, Your Honor. Counsel accepted. I ask you to look at these two young people. Not at their faces, necessarily, but into their hearts. Are you going to condemn their pure young love simply because they happen to be journeying to New York together to be married? 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 Oh, no. 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 Condemn them, no. Just think, Your Honor. Just think, Mrs. Pitts, that in the years to come, they will be able to bring the little children to you and thank you. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but what is your first name? Ophelia. Ophelia. Why, their first dear little pink baby girl will be named Ophelia Pitts Lambert after you. <laughs> the court has made up its mind. 
This afternoon. I'm not crazy. Listen, that's dynamite. I know it's dynamite, but she's Jane Van Buren. She's in jail and she's marrying a hobo this afternoon. That's a million dollars worth of libel if you're mistaken, Dorothy. But it's a million dollars worth of story if it's true. You cover your end. I'll send a man to get a statement from a pappy. Simon. I don't believe it. Mr. Van Buren, they're getting married this afternoon. My daughter to a hobo. To a hobo. Where? In a garden in North Jersey Junction. Who's garden? I'll take you there if you want me to. Get me all my lawyers, some bodyguards, three cars, and a police escort. Come on. Every single solitary one of these tablets have led me towards this marriage. And this one... Yeah. Put your coat on. I won't marry her. I won't. It'll be the end of everything. How can I get out of here? I suppose you'd like to go to jail for a year, eh? I'd rather be in jail a year than dead for the rest of my life. <clears throat> we are gathered about the deceased. Wait, wait! Why, that's the funeral service. Oh. <laughs> uh, pardon me. That's what it is. My funeral. I'll see that you have a nice one. Mutual regard and affection. Please. Please. You, husband and wife. Well? Oh. Oh, yes. I hope this will give you a slight idea of what you're going to miss. I never felt like this before in all my life. I want this mess washed up here and now. You go find that fortune hunting hobo and offer him a hundred thousand. Any amount, within reason, but get rid of him, understand? Yes, yes Mr. Sir. Van Buren. Perhaps a threatening attitude would save you money. All right, do it your own way, but I want this settled and done with today. When did you find out she was the Tin King's daughter? The King's daughter? She what? Who? You, you, you mean Miss Van Buren? You idiot! And you let her get away. Well, I'll get her back. Where's Jerry? Jerry! Jerry! Jerry. 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 His daughter? Married? What? Ah! Is this the husband? Yes. We wish to be alone with him. But I... We have a little matter to settle with him, and it's better we settle it alone. Oh. I would advise you to do as we say. Not yet. If you will take a little ride with us. Oh, no. You're not going to take me for a ride. We've got orders to settle with you today. We mean business. If you give us no other alternative, we'll settle with you right here. Well, I'm here. Jerry, help! They're after me! Come on!
It wasn't enough that you went off on a wild goose chase to Hollywood. You had to top it off by marrying a hobo. Oh, he's not a hobo. He's a Harvard graduate. <laughs> well, it's the same thing to me. I went to Princeton. He's an out-and-out fortune hunter. That's what he is. Look at that. Wouldn't accept my lawyer's offer to settle. Now he's chasing me. Oh, he's not chasing you, and he doesn't want any part of me. Running like a scared rabbit. Uh, he's up to something. Stop at the Osiris Club. Drive straight to the dock. Uh, you're going on the yacht, Jane, and you're going to forget this fellow. I intend to forget him as soon as possible, then. But I'm going to see that he never forgets me. Give me your coat. You wait here, then. You bet I'll wait. And you hurry. All right, boys. That'll be all. Thank you. Dr. Ellison, I'm Jane Van Buren. I know. May I offer you both congratulations? Oh, thank you. Uh, we've all been reading. Uh, isn't uh, Professor Lambert with you? No, he's... Uh, uh, well, that is... Uh, you see, I'm leaving on a yachting trip this afternoon. And... And I... your husband is hesitant about asking to be excused from my expedition in favor of a delightful honeymoon. Oh, no, no. Uh, he'll have his honeymoon with you. Oh, that is, I mean... Uh, well, he's not going with me. Well... I'll tell you why, very quickly. Uh, I want you to do something for me. Yes? You know the Nefaris and Eby legend, don't you? We've lost them. Go in. If you will make me out a power of attorney, I will guarantee you one million dollars, dead or alive. And all I ask for myself is a modest ten percent. What's my cut? What do I get? Let's not talk trifles. Here they come again! Dr. Ellis? Oh, yes, Miss Perkins. Did you find the tablet? This is the nearest thing we have to the Nefaris tablet. It's Babylonian. Oh, any tablet will do, as long as it's the right size. There. Now, if you wish to inscribe your personal message on the back of the tablet... I can't thank you enough. <laughs> you may leave the rest in my hand. Wait here! Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Please. Dr. Ellison? Yes? I'm Professor Lambert. Oh. All right. Could you, uh... Could you box me up in a crate and send me to the ship? A crate, Professor Lambert? Killers are on my heels. Red food. Dreadful. Maybe we've missed it. Uh, Tate will get him if he comes out the back way. We'll wait for him right here. Dr. Ellison speaking. Will you please have a packing case sent up? A big one. A uh, man-sized crate. Thank uh, you. Sir. I'm delighted that you arrived in time to sail with us, Professor Lambert. But it is sad that you will be parted from your bride so soon after marriage. Uh, please don't speak of marriage. I'm trying to quiet my nerves. I see. But uh, shall I send the Archaeological Society's wedding gift to your bride? A wedding gift? Yes, you better send it to her. I probably won't live to enjoy it. If I die during the voyage, just a simple sea barrier will do. Uh, very well. Uh, but I'm sure you'll be glad to know that the wedding gift is the long-missing fragment of the nefarious Anibi tablet. The missing fragment of the ninth tablet? Our advance expedition uncovered it, and the precious package just arrived today. Is the inscription legible? Oh, entirely so. Thanks to your earlier translation, I have deciphered that Nefaris was rescued by his loyal servants. Rescued? They did lift the stone from him and showed him unto a secret tunnel from which he did escape. I escaped? And he did find that Anibi had been abducted by the pharaoh and taken a prisoner to his galley. She was abducted. It's true. But Nefaris, leading a, a charmed life, did defy all danger, and did reach the pharaoh's galley, and did challenge the pharaoh and all his men. And the navy, his bride, was given to her victorious bridegroom. Well, that's more like it. Pharaoh's galley. That navy must be aboard some ship. A strange coincidence. I, I, I hear that your bride is aboard a ship, uh, sailing this afternoon on her father's yacht, the Jasmine. Uh, Pier 19, I believe. Her father's the pharaoh. Oh. Oh, uh, I uh, have the precious fragment sealed for protection. Uh, shall I send it? I'll take it myself. I can't die. Nothing can stop me. 
Uh, Pier 19? Pier 19. She's mine. Hey, I'm not going to die. What? Nothing can stop me. Come on. Ah, Professor. Oh, you. Go ahead. Pull your gun. Go on. See how far it'll get you. Uh, but listen. I, I dare you. Uh, what, what Taxi! Taxi! Just a minute. Cab driver! Get in! You'll have to wait. Destiny doesn't wait on taxi drivers! It's hey! Hey! Devil! Devil! Are you sure you can drive? What do you think I'll do it? What are you trying to do? Kill us all? We can't get killed! Who said so? The night tablet! He's nuts! Let me out of here! Ah! Put on your face! Look out! Look out! Look out! Look out! Relax! Relax! That's better. Relax! Get that thing over there. Get that thing over there. Come on. What's the idea? I said, what's the idea? Fire! 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 I knew it. We just put it out. No, no! Here, 19! Here, 19! Yes, it's a blazing inferno! Hurry! Come on, get the thing There's Mr. Van Buren. Here we are. Yes, yes. Come on, Jane. Come along. Captain, if a man in spectacles tries to board this yacht before we lift anchor, throw him off. Right, sir. We weigh anchor in ten minutes. Well? Uh, splendid. Uh... The next gang plane. Or that red gas pump. Where's the fire? Over there. Come on, boys. Over here. Well, what's this all about? Oh, Captain. Come on down here. Give me that nozzle. Come on. Over here. No. Over here. Come on. Come on. Get in here. Hurry up, boys. Come on. What station are you from? Uh, Marine Corps. Who uh, asked you to come aboard? Hold your hoses. There's no fire here. How do you know? We don't tell you everything. Oh. Come on, come in. What do you mean, no fire? Who sent in the alarm? I don't know. I didn't do it. A Navy! A Navy! Uh, here, here. What's all this commotion? Where is the Navy? Are you a Navy's father? I am J.J. Van Buren, sir. Mr. Van Buren! How do you do? Yes, oh. yes, yes. Where's the fire? Ah, oh, never mind the fire. It's out. I'm a Navy's husband. Who's a Navy? Uh, she's your daughter. But she's my wife and I've come from. Oh, I see. Why, you fought too hard. I am Professor Lambert's attorney. Now, do you wish uh, to... You keep on with it. Stay head out. Where is she? Now, you might as well come where she is. Don't try to hide her. That's none of your business, sir. Now, you get off of my yacht or I'll have you thrown off. Oh, no. Oh, well, uh, we'll see about that. I'll ring for my men. Go ahead. Press all your buzzers. Press them and ring them. Won't do you any good. Shut up, boy. Where well, are my men? Here we are, sir. What is it? Just throw these men off. What, what men? Why? What men? Why? These men won't do you any good, Pharaoh. Send them away before they get hurt. No, no, we can't have anybody get hurt. Excuse me, gentlemen. All right, never mind. Call I'll find them myself. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Just a minute. There you are. These quests can't even lay a hand on me. You think these eight men can't throw a little runt like you off my yacht? Well, you just saw what happened. They've been paralyzed. I'll give you just one minute to follow your lawyer ashore, or would you rather be thrown over the side? You're making yourself ridiculous, Farrell. You can't hurt me. It says so right here. Oh, it does, eh? Yes. <laughs> All right, boys. You better hang on to that. Now you may need it. Hey, man! You're just making yourself ridiculous. One! one. Catch it! Three! Back, Farrell. Three! Are you going to give me my bride, or do you want some real trouble? You get off this, you whore! I'm not leaving without her. Show him back in, man. 
I'm sorry for you, sir, because you don't realize how powerless you are. Come on. Beat him. Oh, beat him. Oh, bring it yourself. Bring it, I'm giving you one more chance, Mr. Van Buren. I have lawyers to deal with fortune hunting scum like you, sir. I'm not a fortune hunter, and I don't want to talk to lawyers. I want my wife, and I'm going to get her. Get him, man. Get him. Get him. Go away, boys. Go away. Keep him. He is not employing the proper tactics, Jeremiah. If he comes up again, you tell him. Babylonian? Oh. All right, Captain, there he goes. You know, I'm rather sorry to see him give up. I was almost beginning to believe him. Persistent fellow, wasn't he? That's all, man. <laughs> I'll show them all. <laughs> Come on, Professor. Judge, Jerry, I need help. If you're going back on that boat, you'll need plenty of help. Huh? Come on. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, hey, hey! You want to fight? Or what? Follow me and you'll find out. My God! Hey, what are you doing with those guys? Hey, hey, what's the idea? Hey, hey, hey! Hey, you hey, hey, Okay, 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 boss. I'll hurry. Hey! Hey! Come back and fight! Come back, Batcher! No. Why? Why? Now for that finishing test. Hurry up. Oh, a smart guy, mm -hmm. huh? Is that so? Oh, huh? Wait! I did it. Oh, he did it. He did it. Come on! <laughs> For me, thank you very much. Come on, you never, you never, come on, come on, you never, come on, 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 Uh, lemonade. Lemonade. Nice weather we had. Uh, we're getting pretty hot a minute ago. Say, uh, you look like a fighter. No, wrestle. 
I used to wrestle in the guard. Yeah, you in pretty good condition? Oh, great shape, uh, great huh? shape. Uh, how's your back, Mother? Well, I'll show you. I can wear this pillow. Well, that's fine. fine. Yeah. 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 Where are you? Here, what are we waiting for? One million dollars! Gary! Look out! Here we come! Oh, 
Wait a minute. I'm on the wrong boat. It's all a mistake. It's the biggest mistake you ever made in your life. That boy's terrific. He wouldn't be fighting like that if it weren't for a fake tablet. What? He's not so brave. He thinks he's leading a charmed life. Go ahead, press your buzzers. Call the United States Navy. Change mine and I've come for it. Dean, come on, listen. young man. You listen Dean, to me. please leave the boat before the crew kills you. That tablet that Dr. Ellison gave you wasn't real. I know it wasn't real. I threw it in the river. Sit down. Young man, young man. Call your crew, all of them. This is as good a way to die as any. My crew isn't paid to battle belligerent bridegroom. Please, can't you see that we want to be alone? This may be our last chance. And you did all this knowing the tablet wasn't real? Believing you might die any minute? I did it because I know that I'm going to die most any time anyhow, but it's worth it if I can be your husband until I do. Uh, that is, if you don't mind being a widow. And you think a few weeks with me worth dying for? Oh, the way you kiss me in North Jersey Junction, I know it. Do it again. Oh, don't. Yeah, careful, careful. Don't interrupt. No, Dean, no. We can't be happy. We could if he'd go away. No, we can't ever be happy if you expect to wake up dead every morning. Who said that I... Well, we could try. Uh, Look here, young man. If that tablet's what's causing all this commotion, I'll get it for you. You can't get it. I'm beginning to like you, my Keep boy. Keep still. Don't expose your ignorance. How much will it cost? Any you amount can't of buy it money. money. You lost its well, how long has it been lost? Centuries. Three thousand years. Well, I... well, in that case, it may take some time to find it. <laughs> this is the happiest moment of my life. This is really it. We finally found it. The ninth tablet. Yes, and I've translated it. And you're not going to die tomorrow as you've been expecting all this time? No, darling. Our worries are all over from now on. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> 